For high temperature superconductors, we are in a situation that we have to come up with a solution which is economically feasible. People would like to get the costs down. The way to do that seemed to be to use yttrium barium copper oxide. It's what's called a coated conductor. Single crystals by the mile. I don't know who exactly said this, but people laughed. The point is, in fact, that now we can say that this has actually been done. We think there can be a production of IPCO in 2010, 2011, 2012, something like this. Coated conductors is very, there's been so much done and I don't think, I mean, personally, I don't think there's any point in trying to reproduce industry and trying to just assist them because it's a routine sort of work. I think the area to work in is still novel growth techniques or modified growth techniques because there's still a lot of room there for improvement. There are ev good evidence that there's liquids involved in these processes and however they just form and they're not controlled very well. So one way to improve upon these is to use a technique um, called hybrid liquid phase epitaxy. The method grew out of liquid phase epitaxy and it has the advantages of liquid phase epitaxy where you actually grow things right from a melt with no vapour phase, just purely from a melt. Put a very thin liquid layer down on your substrate and then grow the YBCO through the liquid layer. At the top you have a diffusion and the film is growing under the liquid phase. And you get with this three phase epitaxy method high quality of neodymium barium copper oxide film. There are one bothering point with this method is the fact that you, have, you are growing a high density material and it takes more than all one week to fully oxidize the material and the bothering point is when you are oxidizing this material you are changing so much the parameter that cracks appear at the interface. When all these conditions are fulfilled you got a TC which is 93 or 94k with a very very flat surface. It's a combination between excellent fundamental research and on the other side real innovative engineering processing methods uh, which need to be developed. Coated conductor now allows us to take a superconducting thin film and integrate that with a metallic substrate with suitable buffers because you don't want interdiffusion because of the high temperatures of processing. And now under these conditions you can have this, the, the metal substrate that gives you the ductility and the strength, the buffers to allow you to make the superconductor without ruining superconductivity and then the superconductor itself to carry the current. Here an arc furnace. Uh, the arc furnace consists of a crucible which is shown here inside made from copper. This crucible is cooled by a water flow under high pressure. Then we have on the other part this movable tip which uh, is used to uh, make the ignition of the arc and uh, can be used to balance the arc over the sample. The sample is already in the crucible. It's a piece of nickel which should be melted to uh, a new crystalline structure. The alternative technique of making the experimental pieces of nickel-based alloys is a melt casting in a vacuum furnace. The rods are ready for mechanical deformation. After each reduction sequence, the rod must be reheated. Heated rectangular bars are rolled to the lower dimensions. This long process of manufacture of the flexible, highly textured nickel tungsten tapes requires certain skills and precision. The way of uh, getting very high quality substrates uh, for the coated conductors based on uh, rabbits it's a very uh, difficult task uh, because for already PPM uh, inclusions can change completely the, re the recrystallization behavior. Another point is uh, we need extremely smooth surfaces with the uh, nanometer roughnesses on a long scale obtained by these long length heavy industry techniques. The texture 
the metallic tape. We have to work in the reducing uh, environment. We use forming gas, temperature 700 degrees. Pilot plant for the fabrication of coated conductor tape based on vacuum evaporation. As a main advantage of this technique, a large area can be coated at high deposition rate. Metal vapors are produced in a high vacuum ambient by evaporating the metallic ingredients of the superconductor compound, in this case yttrium, barium and copper, simultaneously from resistively heated tungsten and tantalum boats. From the boat sources, the metal vapors spread in vacuum until they reach the metallic substrate, usually stainless steel or a nickel alloy. In order to form the high temperature superconductor compound with proper chemical stoichiometry, the metal's evaporation rates are monitored and controlled individually by atomic absorption spectroscopy. The metal tape substrate is wound in 16 loops through the active area and radiation heated to about 700 degrees centigrade. The tape is delivered from storage coils into the winder, which accommodates about 16 meters of tape. An oscillating oxygen shuttle, passing six times per second across the deposition area, supplies the necessary oxygen flow to transform the evaporated metals into the desired yttrium barium copper oxide. I forgot to tell you that it's, it's very important this point, high oxygenation rate, because you cannot increase the frequency of the oxygen pocket for mechanical reasons, so the, the oxygenation rate is really a bottleneck in the thermal configuration. For the last few years, people all around the world have been trying to fabricate long lengths of what's called coated conductor tape. Everybody realises it's got excellent performance, but in fact nobody has fabricated very long lengths of it. So what we're proposing here is instead of trying to make long lengths of tape, we're actually depositing the various films on cylinders. The whole processing is done uniformly because of the coaxial cylindrical geometry. And then we pattern the films afterwards in order to make electrical machines of a different type, but all using this, essentially the same manufacturing technology. So it doesn't matter whether you're trying to make a transformer or a resistive fault current limiter. A good idea is uh, to introduce nanoparticles into high TC films, which is one of the most challenging tasks, and nobody really succeeded in doing this. Not much work has been done, actually, in controlling pinning and coating conductors. One of these options was to add barium zirconate to the YBCO. And the reason for that is barium zirconate is a very good crucible material for YBCO. It doesn't react with YBCO. The idea is to, to put in these barium zirconate and form nanoparticles in the material for pinning it shouldn't react and you should form the right size distribution. So um, these barium zirconate particles act as random pinning centers but also induce correlated defects. And so the combination of the random and the correlated defects strongly enhances the pinning. So here we have it. There's coated conductor, single crystals by the mile, no grain boundaries, and here we have the current flowing along this just as we would like. It is within our grasp. It's a very interesting mixture of physics and material science and production engineering requires just the bright people like we see sitting in front of us who are watching this video right now.